The worst thing in the world just happened. I'm not even joking. I don't know what the f we're gonna do. This is some exciting times, guys. Right, you ready? Right, Ooh. We've got some fuel. Here we go. And we're gonna start it. Are you ready, guys? <laughs> Are you ready? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. The bike engine is here in the Reliant. And the chances of this actually starting today is actually quite high. I actually think potentially we might have this starting today. We've got to finish off a couple of little things because we, we got a bit stuck in the last episode. We've got to finish putting the clutches back together. I've actually had them soaking overnight in a dog bowl. So the, the clutches, although it's said in the back of the clutches that you don't need to soak these ones, a lot of people in the comments um, actually said to do it anyway and I remember MK Sports Cars telling me to do it as well so we soaked the clutches in some oil so our oil has turned up so we've got some motorbike oil here which is mobile I've always used them in the Evos and things like that so I've always liked them we've got an oil filter because we may as well we've had the clutches soaking in this oil overnight so we've got some EBC SRK race clutches so they're Kevlar clutches We've got some new steel plates as well. I'm a little bit worried to install it because I'm getting conflicting information from everywhere, every source I look at, uh, but we're just gonna send it. So these clutches are raised clutches, so they're gonna be a lot more aggressive. So they're gonna hold the weight of the car and the springs are a lot more aggressive as well. So it's gonna feel a bit more like a clutch because right now a motorbike clutch just doesn't feel like anything's happening. So we're gonna install the clutches first. And then we can put the engine back together in terms of the engine mounting. We also ordered a new starter motor. Here is my new starter motor, my second hand new starter motor, which I got for eBay for like 40 quid. Uh, so we actually broke the starter. I actually wanted to crank it in the last episode, but the, bro the starter motor broke, so I couldn't. So we've got a new starter. We've, we've got everything here, realistically, to have this engine running today. So I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna crack on. Okay, so first we're gonna install the clutches. Now I had a bit of an issue here, to be fair, because there isn't really any manuals or information on doing this online. I managed to find a video on YouTube, but here's what some of the different ZX6R. So I didn't really know which information and how to find because the standard uh, clutches, they say that you're meant to have two different friction plates and they go at the front and the back. But in this EBC kit, all the friction plates are exactly the same. So I actually rang EBC, um, expressed <laughs> that I feel like they should have put instructions in the box um, and then kind of asked for some information and they said just put them in friction plate steel, friction plate steel and I should be fine. So these are the uprated heavy duty springs. Again, I'm just kind of going off what I've seen on the internet. There's no torque settings that come in the box, no absolutely nothing. So I'm not going to lie guys, I'm pretty much just winging this. The worst thing in the world just happened. The worst thing in the world has happened. I'm not even joking. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe. <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually not. I'm literally fuming right now. What? I've just broke one of the clutch bolts. It wasn't even tight. What are these bolts made out of cardboard? It literally wasn't. I remember how. I don't know what the f I'm gonna do. I've literally just snapped one of the, that's literally like snapping a flywheel bolt. I've literally just snapped a f flywheel bolt. Mate, that wasn't even tight. Like, honestly, that wasn't even tight. I, 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 I like, I'm not being funny. This kit has literally come with f all. I rang them and I said, how, how am I meant to fit this? And they were like, oh, it's just manufacturer. And I was like, yeah, but there's no washers. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, but this, this kit just replaces them. You don't need to use, well, just put the f Instructions in. I actually don't even know what I'm going to do. The plan was to drill a hole in the middle of the bolt and then get a stud remover and spin it out. It's actually really loose in there, so when I'm trying to drill a hole, it's just spinning it in. And I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to spin it in further that no stud remover is going to get. So I'm actually going to get some super glue and I'm going to super glue the end of this to the end of the bolt and hopefully I can just spin it out because it's really not tight. Okay, the super glue trick didn't work, but I've got a screwdriver and I'm literally just pushing against it and trying to turn it. And I think, I actually think, either either it's doing a good job of making me think it's coming, or it's actually coming. I can't tell. Only thing I can tell is I'm gonna have to do a thread chase after this. Right, 
Charlie said he'll come to help. Charlie, sorry, he didn't want to be in the video. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> We've uh, we kind of mutually come up with the idea at the same time to get the stick welder <laughs> and weld a welding rod to it because it is turning in, isn't it? Like it's going in dead easy. It's not. It's yeah. So we're gonna do, we've got the stick welder. We've just done it on. We tested it on one of the other bolts. And the good thing is that this is this is alley, so it's not gonna weld to the outside. It should literally just stick the rods to the bolt. <laughs> In theory. So once it's stuck, are, you, are we going to turn that off so it doesn't fucking... Yes, yeah. Right, right, okay, yeah. So we're going to stick it. When it's stuck, Charlie's going to turn the stick welder off and hopefully the, the rod is just on the bolt, so... Oh. Yeah. Oh, it wants to turn, but it's... Uh... Right, so we got in in the morning and Shane was like, just take it off. Shane knows a bit about bikes. She was like, just take it off. And we took yeah. off the clutch, what's it called? Clutch basket. A clutch, a clutch basket. <laughs> Imagine if I just did that last night, Shane. Yeah, be running. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, guys, there was cumulative around three hours spent on that last night. Can't, can't come in here two minutes. Yeah, just take it off, mate, we've done it in a minute. <laughs> take it off and there we go, he's got out. <laughs> Fuck. There she comes. I definitely, I should definitely, um, Give that thread a little chase, eh? I think we're chasing it now, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the other way, where I've been fucking st shoving that stick welder in there. <laughs> so we are back on track. Everything's good to go. We've got four new bolts here. Uh, there's actually a bolt shop next door, which is awesome. So I went in and we've got two, we've got four replacement bolts and these are higher tensile as well. So these are a lot stronger. So hopefully I won't snap them. I'm definitely gonna get the torque settings, but like, honestly guys, I cannot stress how not tight they were. So I'm actually really worried, but at least I know we can do that again. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the clutch basket back together and uh, start again. This will be starting this video. It honestly will be starting this video. I'm determined. Shane's gonna tighten them, because I'm, I'm shit scared. Right, so how tight are we actually doing these? We are doing this to manufacture specification. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Which is what? Uh, it's <laughs> a top secret talk <laughs> setting, but it's safe. Right, be careful. Right. Honestly. Yeah, look, look, Phil. So fill that. Yeah. That stops, so Phil. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to Vault World. Yeah. yeah. We we'll put the clutches back in, hey, and uh, like we're trying to look for instructions online. And, and I hate to say it again, it but why are these? Why are these? Why are they not? I rang. I rang EBC because I was like, look, guys, I'm getting conflict and information everywhere I look on the internet. Like some people saying put the washers in here, some people saying don't put the washers in, some people saying put the washers in the front. I rang them and EBC were like, yeah, yeah, without kit you don't put the washers in. And I was like, well, why is that not the instructions? Well, we do say to get it fitted by a mechanic at a garage. Yeah, I rang them and they was like, yeah, don't put the washers in. And I was like, okay, we're not going to put the anti anti judder washers in. But just like, why is that not in the box? You know what I mean? I said, I was like, is there a reason you don't put the instructions in? We don't put instructions in any kit. So I was like, well, I understand that mechanics should be doing it, but. I'm sure a mechanic. Fuck off. All you guys are mechanics. I'm saying, a mechanic is doing it. Yeah, mechanic is doing it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, anyway, the clutch is in. And I'm eagerly watching Shane tighten, tighten these. <laughs> So again, not much research on the gaskets and stuff, but from what I did find, people are saying that, they, that they've that they reused theirs um, and it's totally fine. So I cleaned up the gasket and I actually put a little bit of sealant just on each side, just so we're definitely not going to get any oil leaks. Right, so the clutch is all on. It's all bolted back into the frame as well, so it's all literally bolted up. All we've got to do now is uh, literally give it fuel and it will start. Actually, I'm lying. We've got to, do, we've got to put a couple of grounds in, so... We've got to drill through the metal and just put a couple of grounds in somewhere like these. We do need to buy a motorbike battery, so we're going to go out and get a battery in a second. But one thing we're going to have to do is now the airbox is on. Sorry for the noise in the background. We've got even less room in the engine bay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the grinder out and we're going to cut away this because this is exactly where the airbox is going to sit. And wire in here as well, we're going to remove all this horrible old wiring which we never need to see ever again. Right, I actually think there's not much more we can do with the body off the car. <clears throat> we need to put the grounds on the chassis, but to do that I'm going to have to have the body on the car. Because if I put the ground somewhere where I can't get to or I can't get the bolt etc, then it's not going to be ideal. So I need to find, I need, I need to know where the engine sits 
to start doing the fuel, start, start doing the grounding and start doing the rest of the wiring as well. So I think I'm going to grab one of the lads and we're going to put the body back on the car. I've cut some more away from the car and I've cut some more away the dash as well. So we should have more, more than enough room. But there's one way to find out. So as I was trying to put the shell back down, we needed to cut even more off. Oh my god, there's going to be nothing left. Okay, so the body is now on. I've just fished all the wiring through, so we've kind of just we're going to make this a little bit presentable. Now, someone in the last episode said that this thing is some kind of like a resistor for the battery, and this has to be bolted to metal. And we just need to kind of just make everything a bit tidier and, and realise where things are and put them where they need to be because we actually need to start putting the grounds in in relativity to where the wiring is going to be. So look how good, <laughs> we're getting close guys. Just ran to put an MOT in the caddy and I've come back and this package is here and I'm pretty sure I know what it is and I can't wait to show you all. It's something for this. Very kind company called Race Car Wings. They, um, they predominantly make um, custom wings for race cars and stuff, but they actually race a lot of bike engine cars as well. And he has made me a custom selector a shifter slash sequential shifter. And I'm pretty sure this is it, so I'm excited to open it up and, uh, and have a look. Because this is one of the main things I was worried about, was how to get the shifter forward and back instead of left and sideways. And he's made something for me. So, so here is my sequential shifter which race car wings have graciously, honestly, thank you so much. We're gonna install our sequential shifter in the next video, so let's carry on for now with this. So yeah, I believe this is a regulator of some sort for the battery, and I believe this has to be bolted down to metal. So we're just gonna drill two holes in the frame. I'm actually gonna use those same holes to run those couple of grounds off as well. This is some exciting times, guys. I've been waiting for this battery for most of the day. It's turned up. We're just going to see if everything's got power first and foremost. So, because I don't know if I've got the grounds correctly in or whatever. So, we've got the positive on there. Something happened. I heard something. Let's turn the key. We've got power. Oh, this is unplugged. This is unplugged. Right, you ready? Right. <laughs> Wait, I can't remember which one means it's in neutral. I think it might be blue. Wait, hang on. One down. One down. So it's going to be to the left. So we want to go all the way to the bottom and then one up, yeah? Wait, down. Because I'm, I'm sideways, I'm getting confused. Hmm. I'm not getting any oil in it. Are you? No. Oh, why would you do that? Well, because it's a bit of a faff to put. <laughs> but if it's in gear, it's going to fucking fly forward, isn't it? You yeah, ain't got the proper attached have you? Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, we all want to start this. So I've fabbed up some stuff. The fuel pump is actually plugged in and it's going to the fuel line and we're just going to put a funnel in there and just give it fuel. But for now we need to give it oil so I've got one of these. Right, we've got some fuel. So we're going to give it some fuel. <laughs> right. Let's turn this camera on. Here we go. I'm scared. I am scared. <laughs> right, are we ready? Shane, do you want to hold the negative on? Yeah, yeah. Right. Are we ready? I'm not really a motorbike provider. We've got power. Kill switch, right? That'll run it. That'll start it, yeah? Yeah. What did and then you need this. That's the start button. Oh, we're, are we losing amps? Yeah, I think we're oh. losing some earths. Right, yeah, it's gone off you now. You did clean it? the paint off of them before you... No. <laughs> yeah, but we're getting it from the bolt, right? Not a very good earth, no. No. We've cleaned the grounds up. And I'm not getting any lights. Well, the guy who made the uh, 
my shifter, he said just put the starter straight to the battery because um, he says there's quite a few fail safes which will stop it from cranking. So we're gonna get it ready to fire. We're gonna have the ignition on and we're gonna start it. Are you ready guys? <laughs> Are you ready? It's on the start, right? Yeah, it sounds like solid lights. Not working. Uh, how does the starter even work on these? Is there like a ring gear or something? That just sounds as if it's not engaging. So we can't get it to start. So we just jumped the starter motor and it's just spinning. It's not actually engaging the flywheel. So we've took it out to have a look and do a demonstration. It's just spinning. So that's the noise it just makes inside the car. So it's not actually turning the engine over. So I don't know if the starter motor's bollocks or... But they feel the same. Like, they don't feel... But it sounds like it should move, though. Do you know what I mean? So, again, I'm in a shit situation. I just wish I never messed around with the clutch. I'm not sure what's going on, but now... Well, it was in neutral. So I tried to just knock it into gear. And it went into gear, but now I can't get it out of gear. It's, as you see, fully in gear. And the lever, I can't, I can't knock it back or forward. It is stuck in gear. And what's even more worrying is that when we pull the clutch, I still can't move the crank. And what's even more, more worrying is that even though it's stuck in gear now, meaning that the crank's not moving, I can put my finger in to where the starter motor was and I can easily spin. I don't know if it's something to do with the clutch. And the most annoying thing is to even have a look at the clutch. I've got to get the body off, take all the engine mounts out, lift the engine, drop all the oil, just to even have a look at the clutch. And I wish I never fucking touched it so i'm at a loss here i don't know what to do race car wings has massively been helping so thank you so much um but i, but I just i don't know what's happened so i'm gonna upload this video and hope that someone is go good with bikes and has watched the whole process and and gone ah that's what you've done wrong um but for now i don't know what the hell's going on it's stuck in gear and it's not starting the starter motor's spinning but the gearbox or just isn't. So one side of the flywheel is saying one side, I don't know how it works. There's two ring gears, one's at the starter, one's at the back of the clutch. I'm not sure how it works. Um, but it just feels like something's not connected and it's not starting and I can't even get out of gear. So any comments would be massively appreciative. But for now, I suppose until I can get an answer with this, we're gonna jump on with the E30 and the off-roader. So I love you all and we'll see you in the next one.